Thanks for staying with us. What could be described as a Nigerian banking powerhouse, as well as a pan-African financial services champion, has been created with the merger of Access Bank and Diamond Bank. At the unveiling ceremony in Lagos, the Access Bank Group Managing Director, Mr. Herbert Wigwe, says the institution now has a customer base of 29 million people spread across three continents. It's an evening of glamour as people from all walks of life converge on Eco Hotel Lagos to witness a milestone event. The merger of two iconic brands in the banking industry in the country, Access Bank and Diamond Bank, which according to the Chief Executive Officer of the bank, Dr. Herbert Wigwe, is set to transform Africa's banking experience and landscape. The vision is about the fusion of the two great brands, taking the strength from the two of them to create something that will represent the finest, the finest of Africa in this country. That's what we're doing. Sharing the stage with his partner, Mr. Aigbuji Aik Imohwede, the group managing director, give thanks to God for the journey so far. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before the unveiling, several top personalities, including Africa's richest man, Aliku Dangote, as well as the MI of Kanu, Alhaji Mohamed Sanusi II, pay glowing tribute to what Access Bank was and has evolved into. When we meet in our own uh, inner cycle of Dangote and we discuss about some few business to now go and crack, the first stop is access bank. Today, there is this deep sense of personal satisfaction that 12 years ago, I saw in this bank a bank that was a third-tier bank, a bank that would be the biggest bank in the Nigerian banking industry. And now to the unveiling. The new logo tells a story of combined knowledge, skills, workforce and resources to create one of Africa's most respected banks. We have one system. Um, customers can transact from anywhere they want using the same account numbers. It's absolutely seamless. With the quality of services on offer by the new Access Bank, their customers may just be able to access more. AXA Mansad, one of the country's leaders in insurance and assets management, has unveiled a new television commercial titled Stay in the Picture. At the event which held in Lagos, the Mansad CEO, Kunle Ahmed, hinted on the need to change the narrative about life insurance policy from claims after death to a journey of benefits while alive. Something new and in tune with modern reality is coming from the House of Insurance Proficiency, Arthur Mansard. To share with his first live audience, they have invited the regulators, professional body members, and other relevant stakeholders. It's the launch of a new television commercial that seeks to change the narrative for insurance policy. The TBC conveys Asa Mansard's new thinking, moving you from an obligation mindset to experiencing living benefits. There are living benefits when you have life insurance and you don't have to die before you enjoy life insurance. Some people are paying their children's school fees all at once when they don't realize that they could have had an insurance educational plan from the time their children are born. So, Asad Mansad says you can actually have a life policy with living benefits for yourself, enjoy it when you are alive, and even when you are not there, you can be in the picture by providing for your dependents. So we're saying that you can actually take a solution that can be there for you while you're here, that you can benefit from. And in addition to that, someone, your beneficiaries can also get something at the end of the journey, depending on what option you're walking through. We are evolving from saying, we pay clips. That should be given. That should be your role. We are evolving into saying that we want to be with you, to partner with you, 
all through your life journey. I am happy that with Axel Mansard Life Products, I'm going to stay in the picture for my son. For them, staying through the consumer's journey is the driving force behind this new campaign. We have products that can give you free health checks, which helps you even know the status of your health, bundled into our life insurance product. We have products that give you cash back, as much as 50% of your money back. We have products that give you loyalty bonus. And we have products that even help you when you are permanently disabled. It's the move away from the payment of claims which is given to partnering and helping you stay in the picture all through your life journey. So when it all comes down to doing what's right, you want to stay in the picture for your loved ones. Just ask Asa Mansa. And now time for the rest of the business news of the day. Here is Ibada Amawe. Many thanks for staying with us and welcome to Business News. Financial services industry regulators need to ensure that banking and economic policies complement each other in order to enhance financial inclusion. That's according to the Executive Director of Corporate Planning and Compliance at Unity Bank, Usman Abdul Kadri, who was speaking on our program Business Morning earlier today. Um, good. Uh, make sure that our banking policy implements uh, our economic policies. Um, that, will, that would play out uh, in the financial inclusion. And, uh, we have recently seen an increase uh, in the minimum capital base for microfinance banks um, and other financial institutions that are operating. I mean, people are calling for increase in the minimum capital for banks as well. Um, what this does is to, is to water down the benefits that have already been achieved in the microfinance banking sector. If you raise the entry barrier, um, players will certainly uh, no, not be able to play uh, as they want. So that will, that will create a dislocation in uh, um, the financial inclusion policy. Um, then the second thing is response to technology and the fintechs, as you said. What Unity Bank looks to do, which uh, was what we started last year, um, is to reappraise um, our entire technology spend um, and our research and development. Um, should we be doing uh, what every bank is doing, or should we look at the fintech sector um, as, uh, as an able partner, I mean, a sector that we can do much more collaboration rather than looking at it um, as if it is uh, um, a, 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 um, a conflict in interest. So we have a number of strategic uh, partnerships with the fintechs, and we love those partnerships. They have helped us um, to sharpen our views um, and to also play in areas that ordinarily will require a lot of investment. The federal government has directed all its ministries, departments and agencies to patronize the internationally accredited services of the Standards Organization of Nigeria for the Management Systems Certification. The directive is contained in a circular from the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, who is asking relevant MDAs to obtain their certification from the Agency for International Best Practice. The scope of the accreditation covers four international organizations for standardization systems, including quality management systems, environmental management systems, food safety management systems, and occup occupational health and safety management system standards. The SDF also demands optimum compliance with the management system certification services in line with the Presidential Executive Order 4 on support of local content. Investors lose appetite for shares on the Nigerian Stock Exchange as the week opens and negative sentiments across all major indices drives the total equities value downwards. Edith Young Iwang has details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. It's a negative start to the month of April and the second quarter of the year as sell-offs continued at the Nigerian equities market. The All Share Index dropped by 1.64% while the headline index fell further below the 31,000 level. 
Now, all the major sectors closed in the red at the close of trade today. Looking at the sector chart, the consumer goods counter was the worst hit, shedding almost 5%, while industrial goods and oil and gas followed, losing 3% and 1.38% each. Now, volume of shares traded was significantly higher at 1.72 billion, worth over 3 billion naira, exchanging 3,251 deals. 1.45 billion shares of Wemmer Bank were traded, followed by UBA and CHAMS PLC. And that's the summary of the stock market report for the day. I'm Edi Diong Iwang. And that's business news tonight. I'm Emana Amawe.